The, the attempted murder was clearly me. It was that alpha physical, that spot where untouchable. And if you want to go there, I'm happy to go there. If someone is willing to disrespect me, I know it's there. I can feel it. My legs shake, my face changes, my eyes change. You knocked him out in front of his mum? I knocked him out twice. You know, I know what's going to happen. So I take myself away from those situations. Um, me going to prison was a, was a network thing for me. You know, I, I networked with everyone. I'm, I, I still speak to people daily that have been to prison. I've got people that are in prison that I send money to. I, all I knew is I was battered up. I knew someone was potentially dead. And I'm in trouble. And my, I knew my little brother had been arrested because he was there. He got nicked as well? The, the, all, everyone that was there, as in men-wise, oh, got arrested. What's going on guys? This video is sponsored by Louis. Some of you know him on Insta as Loads, one of the best Instagram names, let me tell you that. Guys, Louis has been building online businesses for the last five to 10 years and he has spent the last five years coaching others one-to-one -one on how to start businesses. Louis's got over 2,000 profitable testimonials and guys, let me be honest with you, I wouldn't let someone sponsor the show who I didn't vouch for. So trust me, it's legit. Literally, just go send him a DM on Instagram, it's at Loads. All you gotta do is say to him, I come from the Blue Tick Show, help me make some money. And I know most of these people out there scams and there's plenty of people out there offering you millions and millions of pounds and stuff like that. Louis is one of the 1% who actually do it properly. Legitly, you don't need nothing. All you literally need is a phone and Wi-Fi. Send him a message and leave the rest to him. Guys, and if you want to know why I'm sitting here pushing it so much, it's because realistically, doing a nine to five ain't going to get you nowhere. And I know most people sit here and say this because they're getting some sort of commission for it and stuff like that, but I really ain't. I'm telling you as a good person, the host of the show, doing a nine to five ain't going to get you nowhere. So go message Louis, say you come from the boutique show, just ask Louis for the business model, let him do the explaining and let him explain to you how he can help you. I'll see you soon. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick show. Opposite me today, I've got Louis Packham, 10 years in prison for an attempted murder. Welcome to the show. What's going on? How are you? You're a big lad. World's strongest what? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Like I said, 10 years attempted murder. Yeah. You look like a serious guy. You look like you're capable of it. What's the story behind it? Before we dive into it, who are you? Let's throw it back to the childhood like I always do in all my shows. Yeah, so my name's Lewis. Um, I'm a, a sport advocate. I love everything to do with physical stuff, physical sport, gym, training. But... My identity was given to me because of something I, I did wrong, not because of something I wanted to do right. And that's, that's sort of where it changed for me. So obviously as a kid, I thought I was going to be a professional footballer. I thought I was going to be this, just like everyone has that dream. Um, it wasn't a knee injury. It wasn't, oh, I didn't make it. It was, it was fighting that, that ruined my life. So, What was your childhood like? Childhood was uh, hit and miss. So for the first... 10, 12 years, it was, you know, big family, abusive father towards my mother, alcoholic, um, you know, sharing whatever food we could get from my mum. She worked two jobs, you know, standard story of people that grow up in council estates. But um, I, I appreciate my upbringing. Um, I've got a stepfather that came into my life that changed everything for all of us. In a good way? Yeah, man. He's amazing. He's still in my life now. He's amazing. So, you know, that's why the good and bad. Yeah. My dad wasn't worthy of calling myself my dad is he in your life now no not so, gonna be through choice yeah fair enough i tried it and i tried to rekindle it. it's just not for me i see i see the ugly side that you know my mum told me about but she never she never hid me from it and i guess she was just waiting for me to find out for my own my own you know for myself well listen everyone's future is defined on their childhood it is it builds them as character building whatever you see as a child that is what 99 percent of the time you end up being like so, yeah you're a product of your environment 100 you know what... my father was a a large aggressive violent violence was the answer that's that's what i saw that's what i believed was the right right thing to do whenever you're in an altercation rather than you know people skills communication skills it was always make that person feel as small as possible or as vulnerable as possible so obviously you weren't always like that i'm guessing no of course not as a kid you was probably Cute little boy. <laughs> yeah, I was crazy. Oh, really? Yeah, ADHD diagnosed from four, five years old. Um, tics, uh, mild Tourette syndrome, so very, very mild. But the more excited I am, the worse the noises get and the little, you know, I can't control what I'm doing yeah. and it's mad. So even now as an adult, I have coping mechanisms, obviously. But when I'm in 
uh, in work and stuff like that. It's, I'll just let it out. It's part of my personality. Really? But, yeah, man. But yeah, I used to get kicked out of class and uh, exclusion areas in school, you know, behind the, the boards they used to put yeah, you yeah, in. Yeah, and yeah. They used to give me blue tack at the table to play with and I was, I was nuts, mate. All I wanted to do was just run, climb, play football, throw stuff, whatever it was. Just Listen, sometimes that's not always a bad thing. No, it was good. It, but in the I think in the era that I grew up, this whole ADHD thing now it's everyone's you know, got ADHD everyone's got fucking ADHD but when I was growing up they didn't quite understand what it was you know there was no aggression there was no it was all happy it was all hyper the hyperactivity side of it was like prevalent through the whole childhood it was all I was you know I stay away from Coca-Cola I had to stay away from fizzy drinks sweets jelly babies smarties you name it you know, remember them ones yeah, when you yeah, couldn't eat the smarties but um <laughs> yeah so it's crazy mate but I'd really good teachers in my life at school that tried to sort of curve me down that you know you need to do your GCSEs you need to do this but your sport is we can we can tell you're going down the sport route everyone knows you're going to go down the football route and you know they pushed me towards that so that's where I was going and obviously as you got older you did like we all say product of your environment followed in your father's footsteps in some sense regarding the violence when did you realise you was a, a violent man do you know what this it is what it is, but I'm going to say it. I got bullied quite heavily for really? my ears. Yeah, my ears stick out. They stuck out when I was, you know, I'm, I'm nearly 21 stone now, so they don't stick out as much. When I was a kid, they stuck out, right? I got picked on. And I used to go home, you know, crying, upset, whatever. And my mum said, you need to stick up for yourself. But she wasn't trying to be like my father. She mm. wasn't telling me to be violent. She was telling me to stick up for myself. I got an older brother that was, you know, a bit bit handy back in the day so I used to look at him try and emulate him but yeah it, it all changed when I made that decision you know the minute I started you know knocking people out of school for picking on don't pick on me because you're going to get knocked out that's what that's and what I started saying to myself I'm guessing that probably takes you back to there must have been a one day where it first happened yeah man I've got, I remember it right now go on talk me through that day I won't say any names I, I, we used to jump over the back fence of school yeah. and we used to play football on the pitch before we played school uh, before, before school we started school, school yeah and he was waiting for me, this lad, and he used to pick on me all the time. And I remember up until this day, you're a good kid. No good one, kid, no, no one fights. You're a little. I mean, more... I was a little bit rough and tumble, yeah. but yeah, no scrapping, no like, mm, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean, like want to hurt people. And I remember him sitting on these like, you remember with the bike railings where you yes. used to push a yeah, bike yeah, in. Yeah. He was sitting on them, and he was like, I could see him with his little group around him. He was a couple of years older, and I remember him saying something. And I remember when I say I, I don't know how because I never taught myself how to fight like that. I screwed a, a straight jab through the center of his face and I remember him falling to the floor. Everyone was like looking at me and I was just there like, and I remember getting marched off by the teacher. I didn't, I didn't go back to school for about two weeks, but I remember my mum saying, you did the right thing, you know, because I had about a year's worth of yeah. this shit, man. Yeah, I was done with it. And I remember him knocking him out and I was only a kid. What was I, year eight, year nine? So you, 13, 14? Yeah, man. But yeah. All you know what it is? I, I've spoke to a lot of people off camera as well regarding bullying and stuff and it's it's that one turn one that turn man. one time flick they, of a switch that's all it is and then that's it no one fucks with them again because they've done it they've realized oh, i can do that i can i can knock him out if he says something to me i could do it and the reputation was there man. it started building I, I i got a buzz off that um anyone picked on me i was, I was ready to go didn't didn't give a fuck. My football changed. I became more physical in football. I was a, I was a powerhouse striker. I was always more physical than my my age group anyway. And um, was yeah. you a big kid when you were younger? No, I was very athletic, very quick, um, sprinting background. I was just just wanted to move all the time. So, but yeah, I was I was in shape, always in shape as a kid. Didn't understand why. It was because of the ADHD. You know, never sitting still. Um, but yeah, I just all I, I was a speed. Speed demon at football, just over the top, round the back of the defenders. I loved it, mate. I got a buzz out of it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, I was a hoover as well. I used to eat everything. Seriously? Yeah, everything. <laughs> um, so large family. I used to eat the leftovers. I used to eat the um, cakes that no one liked. You know, the, if they had coconut, or they were yellow. My little brother only liked the, the strawberry ones or the pink ones. It didn't matter to you. Anything. Anything. anything mate, yeah. So I was a, I was a dustbin, basically. So... Um, that's probably where it come from. I started getting a lot larger as a kid, a lot more powerful. I was six foot by the age of 14, 15, never grew oh, since. But always in shape. You never always got in, fat. Never never been fat in my life. So maybe so, people will watch this and say I'm fat now. But. That is, that is <laughs> fat. Um, but so obviously eating a lot, eating six a lot. foot, 
You were yeah. solid. I was solid. I was a solid kid. Teenager, I was. I used to stand out. Um, we used to get served alcohol and stuff, you know, when I was a kid, 15, 16. Um, so I knew I, was, I had older appearance, but it was just the ears, mate. They were massive. And I had all my <laughs> teeth done now, like through years of obviously violence and fighting and falling off bikes. And But yeah, my teeth are different now, but I used to have a massive overbite and a lisp. Oh, yeah. I had to have speech therapy, everything. So, really? Yeah, man. I went through it all. Oh, but fair enough. But so I was, a, I was a prime target. <laughs> so, well, not for long. Not for long, no. After you knocked out Mr. Bully... <clears throat> I knocked him out twice. I saw him with his mum. Uh, you knocked him in front of his mum? Yeah, yeah. Come so I, I was playing... You remember the finger save gloves? The goalie gloves? Yes, 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 yes. hard yes. bit at the back. Yeah. I remember we were playing... This was out of school now, and he lived in the same area as me growing up. And I remember him walking over with his mum and his little sister. And I remember knocking him out with his gloves on as well. Just ran straight over to him. Well, he didn't say nothing? No, he was walking with his mum, and he was looking at me like, please not now, sort of thing. And I thought, I, my little brother would watch this and remember this. I remember I took the piss out of him because he took the piss out of me. How did it make you feel? Powerful. Like, and no one was going to do that to me was again. Was you, from that day when you experienced that power, is that what the buzz was? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I, mean, I wish it never happened. I wish I got a buzz designing fucking websites <laughs> and, you know, do you know what I mean? I wish there was something different or painting. But it wasn't, mate. For me, it was it was that alpha physical, that spot where untouchable. And if you want to go there, I'm happy to go there. And do you know what I mean? It it, it carved out a path that I wasn't aware of. No one around me would, would have the confidence to speak to me about it. My mum would warn me, say, listen, you're going down the wrong route, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, no one listens to their mum growing up. But it was carved out for me, mate. I was destined for what happened. I was destined for it. If it wasn't that night, it would have been another night. And when you're... You've knocked him out, yeah? Sweet, no problem. Next day cracks on. Did it just become a thing where anyone could get it? Mate, not like a bully. I wasn't no, walking around. I didn't I didn't But think, you didn't fear. If someone spoke to me in the wrong way, one hundred percent it's on. And no speaking, no communication. You weren't one of them boys who were the arguer, the pusher, pusher, pusher. It was boom, no, no, let's no, go. Like bang, let's crack. So hit first, questions later. That's how it was. And it's mad how you go from being the bully. I was a, listen, now now I'm mature and I'm older. Me and my mum were talking the other day. She said, you, you're such a nice person. You're so funny. You've got a great personality. You know, but there's a side to me. I know it's still there and I'll openly speak about it, but I've got coping mechanisms. I've done courses, you know, sat on boards, done this, whatever. But if, if someone is willing to disrespect me, I know it's there. I can feel it. My legs shake. My face changes. My eyes change. You know, I know what's going to happen. So I take myself away from those situations. Yeah, you have to. Of course. Especially in, in what you do now. Obviously, you are a strong man. Yep. I know people are wondering, what's he going to attempt in murder? We'll jump into that. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> strong man. Do you <clears throat> use the power of the alpha power, knocking someone out? Do you use that when you're trying to win these tournaments? Do you know, it... me, me and my training partner, he's uh, he's current Britain's strongest man. And we, we've just had a, a laugh today because I get more fired up for his lifts and his shows. I haven't got that same switch for my training. I'm always smiling. Like, I can't... I, we spoke about it the other day, training. I don't like myself to feel like that because I feel like something bad's going to happen. It's a trauma response. Yeah. I know every time I felt like that, you get in trouble. something happens. Someone gets hurt. So he's like, yeah, but it's a safe space. This is training. So I'm trying to work with him and potentially work with a, a sports psychotherapist that can help me you channel know, that keywords, music, you know, when the music drops, certain breathing, gum shielding, stuff like that. I'm working with little switches, but at the moment I haven't got it. I'm still strong, you know, I still feel great, but I know there's more there in my training, which which is scary for me because, you know, I'm up until this year, I'm third strongest man in England. You know, so, so we wouldn't want to fuck with you, basically. Well, not, not, <laughs> no, but not truthfully, violently. No, but like, you are, listen, regardless of the, the way you put it, the world's strongest man, like third, whether you're... Nah, not world's, not world's. No, sorry, the Britain's... England's, England's, UK's, yeah. Still a lot of people in England, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know what I mean? like, You've got to be proud of that sometimes. Thing is, yeah, you know, being strong, you know, let's say, you know, like road rage. Yeah, yeah. If I get out of the car, they just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking... But if I was a normal looking man, as in as in a twelve stone man, yeah, every day, family at home, you're gonna you're gonna be a bully to him, yeah. you're gonna disrespect him, you're probably gonna fucking get out and slap him. But because I got out, you shut up. And that's what I don't like about people. You've got this big dick energy and beeping your horn and you're a fucking dude. and then someone gets out, you're like, nah, do you know what? Keep the same energy. Keep the same energy. If you wanna go there, well obviously we're not going there, but no. 
the presence alone is is enough to make people shut up and you know i i've been around serious people i'm not a serious person i'm a joker man like we talk off camera yeah, yeah? Of course. listen i know you're off camera now but with second time we film listen i've been around some serious people travelers lifers murderers yeah. mma ufc all the boys that these people will ruin life special forces soldiers like them boys are serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're not a joke. They're not a joke. They I'm don't not, have the I'm switch. Not, they they like are in that people. mode twenty four seven. I'm just a kid from a little town, went to prison, got strong. That's literally how I look at myself. But there's loads in between. But you got these people out there that don't even look like I've got mates that are seventy kilos that can kick through both your legs. Now you look make me look small on camera. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck me. Right, yeah, go on, carry on. <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, I've got mates that are seventy kilos. You put a hoodie on them. They look like normal normal yeah, people yeah, yeah, and they'll yeah. ruin your life. And, you know, you get these people... One day, people are going to say something to the wrong person, yeah? And that's why... Like, I stand out, yeah? I'm a strong man. I stand out. I'm fucking 130, 140 kilos. So I know that I stand out. But it's the people that don't stand out. They always say the quietest man in the room quietest is the most dangerous man, man in the Absolutely. room. Absolutely. And it, it is true. It's I've so experienced true. things in my life where I've seen <laughs> situations and not ever been in that situation myself. I haven't, but... Obviously, I've been around a lot of people and I've learned the man, when there's an argument going on, the loudest man, he ain't going to do nothing. No, he's already told everyone yeah. what he's going to do. Look at the friend next to him who's been quiet or who's <laughs> yeah. just, he's got his hand on his waist, who's yeah, quiet, yeah. silent, but he knows what he's going to do to you. Yeah, yeah. That's when you need to leave. Or I had a situation myself where kicked off and the guy sat down. Just he didn't done. say nothing. No, no, no. He just sat down and he goes, I'm not going to stand up. And I thought, you're dangerous. Yeah, there's a reason you're not going to yeah. stand it because he knows what's coming. Yeah, I was like, you're dangerous. And I stopped the argument with the people there. I stopped, I diffused the situation and I was like, oh, you don't stop. I made the boys leave who kicked off. And I, was like, oh. I said, bro, that guy sat down knowing what his friends were about to do. <clears throat> yeah, when someone sits down in an argument, <laughs> you know, he ain't scared. Nah. He's got it he, he's, He might be scared of the consequences. Yeah, 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 yeah that, you definitely. Know what I mean, like, I, I try not to even entertain conversation now when I know I've been through hundreds of violent situations now, yeah? I know when it's going to go left or right. And if I can remove myself and I don't need to be near that person or that situation or potential situation, I'm doing the right thing because these people don't understand. They, don't, they ain't been to jail for this. They ain't done... Do you know what I mean? They've not been around certain people. They're, they're the man in their area. Yeah. They don't know about what goes on in, you know, gang violence, you know, Liverpool, Manchester, London, all these different places. People don't fight anymore. Like it's different. You've got guns or knives, that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's different. No one wants to have a hand-to-hand -hand combat or a little scrap in a in a private tennis court somewhere. No one wants that. I remember when I was a kid, my mum would let me go out every day. She yeah. wasn't worried about me getting stabbed. That was never even a, never even a thing. Nah, knife. What? That would be silly. No one's doing that. I lived. In, I was brought up in a council estate as well. Yeah. It was. I used to. My routine was school, home, jump on my BMX. I'm out. Yeah, just pop about all day. When I get home, I get home. My mum didn't get. She didn't even. Ask me where are you going, but now my little brother, I've got a sixteen-year-old. I hope he's sixteen because he's gonna be watching. Sixteen-year-old little brother, I don't let him go to the bus station alone. Nah, like it can change in a heartbeat, mate. Because of the knife crime has gone through the roof, the yeah. gun crime has gone through the roof. You, people are coming out with fucking swords. Yeah, like it's not you, even like they have got a little kitchen knife. It's glorified that you know drill music, everything's glorified. But you got to remember these people are talking about this because that's how they lived. Yeah. Not because that's how they want people to live. Yeah. They're not trying to inspire people. No, they're talk, but pe I think kids misinterpretate what they're hearing, and it creates this, you know, this bad energy in them. That gang violence, and I've, I know gang members now that wish they never grew up in certain areas, wish they never pulled the trigger, wish they never stabbed someone. Like everyone regrets it, right? There's not one person that's like, oh, do you know what? That was the right thing to do. Then. Look, you're you yourself. You made a mistake. You got attempted murder charge. You went to prison for set ten years. You regret it? Yeah. hundred percent you regret it. You might not regret you might say, you know what, it shaped me into the man I am who today I'm proud of who I am today, but in that moment in time, you there, there ain't a person who can sit in front of me and say, Oh, I didn't regret it. Unless you killed a rapist or something like that. That's different. But when you're sitting in the cell, you have lots of moments where you reflect and you do think, Fucking hell, I'm stupid. I yeah. wish I wasn't this person. Like, But then you've got to uh, create a new identity of who you want to be, what you want to become, and that's all moulded for you in the system. And it's harder in the system to you know, even understand where you're going to end up. You, you can't comprehend it because it can change in a heartbeat. You can have someone who's jealous of your progression, yep. jealous of the course you've just finished, the, the bench you've just done, 
I mean, the, the visit that you've had a visit and theirs didn't turn up. You can have so much situations that you think, fuck me, this is never ending. Like, never ending. It's, true. it's intimidating. It's true. So, look, you've got two identities. You do. You have the one while you was in prison and before you went to prison. And now you've got who you are today. And as much as... Listen, I, I'm a fan of your things. Like, genuinely, I look at your thing, I'm like, fuck me, smash it. Even today, you walked in, I was like, fuck me, you got bigger. <laughs> Literally, last time you was here, you was a lot smaller. Yeah, yeah. Like, genuinely. Just in chill mode. Yeah. yeah. Now you're in... Time, Switch on mode, yeah. yeah. It's time to move now. I want to talk about the past first. Mm-hmm. I know it's probably a part of your life you don't like going back to, but good. for these type of shows, we like to. Talk to us. What happened the day you was... The, the incident <laughs> leading up to your attempted murder charge? Uh, so, I would had a um, an altercation with a with a couple that were out doing drinking, whatever. And I was a young kid, and I I had an arranged fight with the guy. So this was this was before the big night, so a couple of weeks before. And the guy, yeah, let's call, let's go up, so and so. I meet you at this road this time, and me and him had a had a ha- had a square up. You had the fight. Yeah, yeah. So I got the better of him in seconds, and his missus jumped in. So. I'm there with his t-shirt wrapped around my hand. I'm giving him uppercuts. He's banging on this door. She's come over, took her shoe off, trying to split us up with a with a high heel shoe. So that was the first incident. I pulled him round. He's gone through her leg. She's broke her leg. So for me at the time, I'm a, I'm a kid, 17. Yeah, I, I've, I've had the fight. Why is she get involved? Yeah, That's what I'm thinking. Well. Anyway, obviously this starts buzzing around the area. Facebook was. Like, we were all using Facebook and BBM or whatever it was, yeah? You know, where's Lewis? Where's Lewis? Everyone's trying to find Lewis, yeah? So I've got this big two-week build-up now, and I'm thinking, fucking hell, I'm, I'm on edge, mate. Everyone I saw that was that was talking my name, it was on. That's all I was thinking. Like, if I know that you've, you've put a status up or you're looking for me or I've heard, then let's go. That's how I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. So I went out on this fucking um, drinking thing, this festival, beer festival. And um, I made it through the whole night, but I didn't know that these three people were lining me up the whole night. Yeah, because they're obviously friends with the girl that broke her leg. And listen, the girl shouldn't have got hurt. It was a freak accident. I held my hands up, did all the right process through restorative justice and reached out and whatever I needed to do, yeah? But it happened. You can't turn back time. And that's my only regret, yeah, for that night. Then these people are lining me up. I'm walking home now. So, been drinking, been around the town, had a couple of warnings from the police, um, and this this guy sticks it on me. Like this, one of these three guys, or the guy you had the fight with, sticks it on me. The guy you had the fight with? No, no, different guy. Stranger. Yep. Okay. So, group group. I didn't know they were looking for me, so they knew who I was. They're from a different area. He's wearing an orange Ralph Lauren shirt with the big blue horse down the front. Yeah, yeah. I remember calling him a traffic cone. <laughs> Yeah, remember saying who comes out dressed like a traffic cone. Anyway, I heightened the situation. My sister was there, my little brother was there, everyone was there. Yeah, big group. I'm thinking this guy's trying to embarrass me. Yeah, so you bring your friends, let's do something. Anyway, out of nowhere, the guy that then become my victim for attempted murder, out of nowhere, he comes and hits me from the side. Yeah, so he's not even part of this. He's just walking home drunk. So he's a stranger. Well, to me, he's a stranger. Yeah. But he knows he knows who these older... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these people are 28. I'm a kid. Oh, yeah. Me. But they're trying to do damage to me. They're looking for me, whatever. This, obviously, the courts don't pick this up. They don't care about this shit, yeah? So he hits me. I fall over onto this little garden wall. I jump up, pass my wallet, my phone over to my friend. And I hit him with this overhand right, mate. When I say... He hit the floor. I heard like a paving slab. I heard it crack. And um, he obviously was out completely cold. And then I see my mate fighting with another guy. Uh, I went over and uh, elbowed him through the side of the face. Um, He ended up, he had a broken jaw, burst ear. So all the fluid came out of his ear. Um, And then I went back. This is, this is the bad bit. The really bad bit. All that work. The guy was out. The guy was out complete. So they had girls around him. They were trying to put him in a recovery position. And I'm just pulling people off him and I'm just stamping on his head. So, you know, that's the mistake. That was my biggest mistake. He, the fight was done. And that is why you got done for attempted, attempted murder. murder. Yeah, if you so didn't do that. I probably, do you know what? I probably got a little 18 months, little three years, slap on the wrist, 
If not, could have, you could have got done for self-defence. Maybe, maybe. But, you know, like, I took it too far. Um, it was uncontrollable. I couldn't I couldn't explain it. I was stamping on his head. Um, there was blood everywhere. Like, the, he was on a hill and the, the, the blood was going down the hill. I remember it all over my trainers and splashing in it. You know, like a kid splashing in a puddle. I remember hearing the sounds and the police turned up because someone had called the police. You get nicked there and then? Oh, mate, instant. Bang, tasers, spray. They were knee striking me. Uh, I ended up in um, Winchester Hospital. I had fucking Velcro straps around my fucking body, my arms, handcuffs. You know where they strap your ankles? Yeah, yeah. Everything. I, I had a spit hood on, fucking swollen. I had a broken eye socket, um, broken foot. My hand was fractured. From was their abuse on you? No, 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 not police okay, brutality. Okay. This is from the, you know, the guy that came over and hit me yeah, from the yeah, side yeah. and me using my feet. So I broke my foot doing my oh, meta metatarsals. Me. So yeah, it was a rough. And then I was in interview. No, no, that's, that's a lie. I went back to the police station. They put me in incommunicado. It's like a glass room. No water, no toilet, because the forensic teams are coming in. Oh, fuck yeah. And um, obviously, I've been arrested, yeah? And I'm thinking, I'm going home in a minute. I'm just sobering yeah. up. And they're like, no, no, no. You're not going anywhere. And I'm thinking, because my head was so messed up from everything, everything that had happened. Just happened. And you were drunk. <laughs> was steaming. Absolutely yeah. steaming. And um, yeah, the, the cameras came out with the... The, the hazman suits and the, they had rulers on them this forensic team they put me in this room they were measuring tattoos they were measuring scars marks and I was, I was naked literally stripped down to nothing they're turning me turned to the side and then this man's holding like a ruler and I'm thinking what the fuck is going on scraping all under my nails um, all up in my gum line my ears I was like fuck like this guy's dead that's all I'm thinking yeah um, interview kicks off um, give my first interview just speak just speak let them have it let them have whatever they're asking me yep done that yep shouldn't have done that I'm sorry open yeah of course I didn't understand the whole no comment thing I'm not from a fucking uh, a different, yeah I'm not from that life mate you know I was in a plea I was like yeah 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 he, then he hit me and then blah, 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 blah. you know when you're just telling him so I was done mate done from word go um, my mum came up to see me at the police station um, brought a little care package up little boxes and socks bless her and uh, I couldn't speak couldn't speak She's ashamed like, yeah mate embarrassed worst feeling I've ever felt to this day um, she looked at me through the glass and just shook her head and that's when the um, the tears came out and I was like fuck did they tell you that you was being well no I got remanded obviously yeah did they tell you at this point no, I didn't understand what they were talking about, mate. They're using fucking police language. <laughs> so you know I mean? At this point, you've still got no scooby doo What actually is Mate, happening? I don't understand. I didn't understand anything. Like, I, all I knew is I was battered up. I knew someone was potentially dead. And I'm in trouble. And my, I knew my little brother had been arrested because he was there. He got nicked as well. The, the, all, everyone that was there, as in men-wise, oh, got arrested. I was thinking, because this new joint enterprise thing had come out, I thought, fuck. Like they did, and I've, I was saying it in an interview. Like, listen, my little brother did nothing. No one, no one. It was me. I did everything. Yep, that one. Yeah, that was me. That one. Yeah, that was me. Like, I was just because I was in protective mode. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I thought. I'm, and what I'm, are they showing you? Are they showing you pictures of? The there was no. There was no pictures at that time. There was fucking. I was about twenty accounts, twenty witness accounts taken. Fuck. I was fucked, mate. Like fully fucked. There's um, no way out of it. No, no. Nah, nah, it is what it is. Uh, I couldn't change it. My my actions deserved punishment, and that's what I received. And I didn't want anyone to get hurt. It was a it was a perfect storm that that them events. Had, you know, my life was going in a certain way. Their life was going. Our paths crossed. You know, whether they should have or shouldn't have. And that's the way it is. And they told me, listen, we're waiting for a bus for. I think I was in the police station for like seventy two hours. They kept getting extensions and. All this because I was young and they wanted to make sure it was done properly and effectively and then I had a solicitor I was like listen can we bail him they were like no bang gone remand so fuck me yeah. and that was at 17 I was a kid mate 17 years old so wow going to remand centre now and uh, <laughs> the naivety kicked in I'm in reception, getting processed. I've been on the bus. I stink. 
you know, there's no deodorant. I'm Nothing. thinking, what the fuck is going on? They put me in some fucking, some next clothes. Like, I'm thinking, this is, what the fuck is this shit? They gave me some fucking plimp soles. And, um, yeah, I think I'm in jail. I think I'm already there. Well, I'm in reception. I thought the holding cell was jail. I remember this guy, I'll say his name, Big Locks, right? This, the first big guy I met, young Y.O. Bigger than you? Mate, he was huge. Oh, really? Yeah. And I remember- and a big lad. I was at the time I was, a little, oh, right, yeah. But th we're kids, yeah. And he's like six three, six four, kid teenager, and he's talking about this uh, armed robbery. Like, yeah, it wasn't me. Listen, no comment. And then fuck court, fuck trial. And I'm thinking, mate, <laughs> this, <laughs> whether you had a mask on or not. <laughs> you know, I remember talking to him. I remember a vivid conversation. And then they slid through the the reception orderly slid through this fucking. Well, it was a microwave meal, but fuck me. It wasn't no microwave. It was some um, mad mashed potato and peas. And, and I remember sitting there and they were like, right, up we go then. And I'm like, up where? And he locks, he's, he's done a little little sentence before. He's like, oh, bro, we're going up to the wings. Wow. Went up through this door. The fucking noise hit me. Like banging doors, animal noises, fucking screaming. Yo, who's that? Yo. Listen, like, where are you from? Boom, boom, boom. And then before you know it, you're answering questions while you're fucking walking with your bag, your clear bag over your shoulder. You're answering questions from doors. You can't even see oh, their faces. Yeah, That's my first first memory of prison. And, and I that thought, was youth offenders prison. That was why I, that was right. a Brahman centre. Oh, okay, okay. And um, okay. I was thinking, this is fucking lively. Like, like, and I said to the officer, like, is it like this all the time? He's like, all the time. And I remember, obviously, you get through the system, yeah, yeah, it calms down. Younger systems, it's more worse. Like people don't shut up, mate. Like constant, and you got to remember all these people are on trial, remand, held without charge, whatever they're on, like or innocent until proven guilty, yeah, yeah. all that shit. They're they're lively, mate. They they don't give a fuck. That was a worst. That was a worst moment for me because I realised this is it now. For I didn't even know how long I was on remand. Like, how long on, can they keep you on remand for? As long as they want, mate. Far from apart from what I don't know. Mine was a year, so fuck you. I guess the worse the charge, the longer you could be on remand, right? Yeah. I had a victim that was intensive care and stuff like that, so there was no trial. There was no until until he's able, Mental. yeah. Because if he dies, that goes from uh, yeah, it gets upgraded to murder. So manslaughter, murder. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, what happened in your trial? Uh, no, nah, forget the trial. What was young prison like? Young prison. Any was, fights? Yeah, yeah. Like loads of little scraps, little tussles, arguments. Um, Everyone's trying to prove they're the main. Everyone, man. mate. It was. It's weird. You're trying to build bonds with people, and then he goes home. He gets released. Yeah, of, yeah, he gets yeah. released without charge, or he gets this, or he goes to the, he get. He's got sentence now. He's come back from trial, so you can't really build friendships. It's not like sentence jail where you know how long they're there. Yeah, for. you're there for a couple of years or whatever. These guys are boom, and then they're back. Another charge. Then they're back. Like that's what I saw a lot of, and that's that was quite um, returning offenders. Quite rememberable for me was um, people coming back, burglars, uh, gang members, possession of this, possession of that, drug dealers. I thought these people are living this life, mate. This this is their life. Yeah. They they don't care. Like I was thinking, fuck me. I hope I never come back to this place. And obviously, I was there. <laughs> fucking, I was there for the longest for the most part. You know, apart from the lifers. I was thinking, fuck me, I've, I'm still on my sentence and you've done three. Yeah, it's like, mad, isn't it? <laughs> so that was quite annoying for me because these these people are doing it all the time purposely. Like they're going out to do this, they're going out to do that. And yours, no matter what we, no matter what anyone says, as much as fair enough, you did do more damage than you should have. Absolutely, yeah. They started on you. Like, I never, I never look at it that way. I know, I know you don't, but as an outsider, I can. Yeah. At the yeah. end of the day, you you don't look at it like that because you've taken accountability of what you've done and you've moved forward in your life. And that's the best thing to do. That is, because otherwise you'll be stuck in the system thinking, oh, I didn't yeah. deserve you this. You get bitter. Yeah. And it doesn't do anything for your progression. You're not going to move forward. You'll never move forward like then, that. Then when people, like, I remember my pre-sentence report, after after I went to trial on the GBH and ABH, the attempted murder, I went guilty first plea. So I wanted my discount. You yeah. went guilty? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mate, yeah, was, talk us through your trial. So I, I took the, um, remember I said I had like the little arranged fight. Yeah. I took them to trial and um, I lost the trial because of, he had a fractured eye socket or something. Um, and I got- So I, you got nicked for that? Yeah. Only after the 
um, bad one. Two oh, weeks okay. Later. So after that, they added that one as well, basically. Yeah. So the, I remember the uh, ambulance call. They played it in court of the girl that broke her leg. And she said, I've fallen over, I'm drunk, blah, 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 blah. And I remember her changing it for a statement saying I was pushed. And that, to me, I was confused. But now I look back, I think they didn't want to go down the police route. It was only when I got nicked for the main thing. Oh, yeah. They come forward and said, oh, by the way. So whether or not it is what it is. But I know that they were going to try and do something themselves. That's what I think. They had a big family, you know, brothers around her okay. and all that. So, but no one's ever spoke to me since about it so i don't know but that time i know that i remember the ambulance call listen people in the press people that read the papers comments on this comments on that they don't see the fucking shit in court they don't see evidence exhibit a exhibit b yeah that's like, true. do you know what i mean that's that true. it's not in the public interest to play that stuff out loud so i remember everything i remember every detail i also remember every detail of what i did wrong or right or wrong whatever so when these people are trying to twist and turn and stand up in court and they're laughing at me because I'm up in the dock and they're trying to laugh at me like, haha, look, you're fucked. I know I'm fucked. Like, I've took account, I've took yeah. responsibility, accountability. So now I look back at my life now, where I am right now, I don't laugh at them. I don't even think about them because they, they were so fucking bitter and trying to get me the longest sentence they could. Thank you. Because... It, it developed me into such a different person. You've come out and you've still changed your life around. I needed you're still, it. I don't know what position they're in, but you're still in a better position than them, I'm Absolutely. saying. Because, listen, you've got your own business now. You've won competitions. You've, we're not even jump. we're going to jump into prison in a second, but in your new life, yeah, you've smashed it. Trying to do the best I can, yeah. Yeah, but, but listen, credit where credit's due, you have, you've done your thing. Like, you've got your transport business. You've got your the Arbron. yeah so I'm getting into the close protection stuff as well for rich and famous and footballers and like you're doing all of that so you're doing really really well but people when you are on trial they just want to fuck you up that's all they want that's all it is they don't yeah. care about your your kids I know you didn't have any but your kids your family your moms your dads they don't care, they about, don't that. care about that they just want to sit there and go Haha, yeah fuck you it's, it's all about impact statements you know how's this impacted their life and it has impacted their life or it did at the time yeah it might still to this day i don't know yeah. but you know i believe that justice was served the sentence was correct there was no appeal from their side there was no appeal from my side we just get on with it because there's nothing we can do about changing that part of what happened did your brother get in any trouble my little brother no 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 he got a suspended sentence and all this sort of stuff. But. He actually got a suspended sentence. Right? Yeah, man, he got done for... So him and one of my friends got, got joint enterprise, yeah. They did. Yeah, but not on the scale that I was on because the, the attempted murder was clearly me. Yeah. It was just the squabbling around it, the, the little... He was trying to hold him back, then he hit him, that sort of stuff, but... When you're in prison, cool, you get sentenced during yeah. the trial, they say, boom, 10 years, attempted murder. Yeah, so I walked away with 14 and a half years in total. So I've got 10 years for the guy. The first, the attempted murder. Oh, raw. Yeah, I got sentenced for the GBH and the ABH as well. So my my remand time wasn't uh, taken into account. So I was discredited remand. I had to start my sentence at a later date. It was it was a piss take. 14 years. In total, yeah. Yeah, GBH, ABH. Your mum and your stepdad, how did they take that? Yeah, broke them, mate. Broke them. It, it's going to, I live in a small community, so everyone knew. Um, everyone knows me now like it's positive now I've made a yeah. change everyone respects me I, I get love on Facebook and Instagram and people are like well done for this but back in the day they were like that's your son that's your son That's your." so I couldn't imagine what she feels so for me doing everything I do now yes I do it for my, my missus and my family and I do everything because I want to make my mum proud and it sounds such a a young thing to say because you know when you're a kid you want to make your mum oh well done it's not like that it's deeper than that I want my mum to know that has nothing to do with her, the way she raised me. And if, if I can progress my life into a certain... And she gets to see me on TV and on podiums and businesses yeah. and expensive cars and nice restaurants, enjoying my life. If she gets to see that and she's happy and she loves me, that's all that matters. And yeah, 100%. And I think that is that is a difference. But that come at a later stage. Yeah, that was... Mate, you're talking years. That years was... Up. You served seven years inside first. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when 
any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help. Like you have to, you have to get out of the system. That's the hardest bit. And how hard was Big Boy Prison? Uh, I was established by that point. Um, I, I would football and training. I got into powerlifting very early on. Um, I became successful in prison at powerlifting. I was very well known across the prison system for powerlifting. Okay. Um, so. The Christmas competitions and all them little things that we used to put together. I was winning everything. Everything. Fittest fittest man in the prison, strongest man in the prison, football, our uh, football. Are there steroids in prison? I mean there are in the adult prisons there's steroids. I didn't want to touch steroids. No, I no, was, no, but in general I'm asking Yeah, general. yeah, people pinning up and oxys and D bowls and Oh for real. Yeah, but mate, they're fucking off we call them eBay D bowl, mate. You don't know where they come from. Oh, okay, fair so right. <laughs> that's up to you if you want your kidneys to explode. But um yeah, so like I established myself through sport like I did at school. It was different. It felt like a felt like a more violent school. That's all it felt like. I re-educated myself, business studies, barbering, all my construction certificates, whatever I could do, I did. Um, parole were happy. Oasis school was going in the right direction. That's what you need to, to get out of prison eventually. Um, so yeah, big boy prison for me was, it felt really weird because I was around a lot of big people, a lot of uh, well-established people in the system I felt like I was I was doing everything that I could to be the best version of me in prison did you stay away from trouble uh, I didn't need to get in trouble I was too was, funny I was too smart yeah I had I had little but it was because obviously do you know what it is I, I think we discussed last time but let's call it young boy prison but everyone's got a point to prove everyone wants yeah, to be the wild, main man mate. when Sentence. you move up is that a bit a lot more chilled a bit more chilled you're in a work in prison everyone goes to work free flow this and that Listen, you're watching all the shit go on. People are crossing paths after 10 years apart and they're like, oh, there he is. That's my man from, you know, this estate yeah. or that that postcode or whatever. So that's their life. Let them live yeah, their he life. He was never in that gang life. I've never been in gang life. I never wanted to be a gang member. Um, I never wanted to talk different and pretend I was, a, you know, my image never changed. I would just love sport, love lifting weights, loved eating food. That's all I love doing. So, <laughs> And then I loved cutting hair. So, Where did the barber thing start? Straight away. In yeah, prison. yeah. Uh, remand. I was cutting hair in remand. I just picked up clippers. You know, imagine if I could show you a picture of the skin fades I was doing. But <laughs> just, <laughs> at, just, yeah, out of nowhere, a, just finished. You just picked it up and fucking. Uh, let me give I had one. a cellmate, little Daniel Sharp, uh, Lewis Redford, who's no longer with us, but little Daniel Sharp. He's in Loudoun Grange now. Bless him on another sentence. But I used to practice on them, and um, it just took off. You know, everyone needs a haircut on the wing. People got visits. They don't really care that it's not a good skin fade they just want the hair gone it's so better than nothing it's better than nothing that's how it started and i thought you know what i'm getting fucking extra food for this like i'd go to servery and get hooked up on chicken and you know oh, that's for you lou they'll pull out the like they've been making you know they do the M mvqs in uh kitchens so they're, they're learning how to yeah, do yeah yeah, yeah. Like, i'm getting like extra pudding cake and custard and i'm like this is nice Sweet, i'm gonna keep I'm cutting hair, mate. <laughs> so for me it was good being a barber in prison was uh, a protective element like I was cool with everyone. Didn't care what skin color you were from. Didn't care what religion you followed. I didn't care what your crime was to a certain extent. Um, you know, like, I just got on with everyone. That's Louis. He's the barber. And then the officers, oh, they were on 12-hour shifts, mate. Can you cut my hair? Yeah, of course I can. No way. Yeah, you're... mate, I was cutting everyone's Swear hair. That's where I'm alive. <laughs> yeah. But these, these guys, they're human beings yeah, too, yeah. right? They got a job to do. They're on fucking back-to-back -back shifts trying to earn money for their fucking family. I'll cut your hair if you can't get to a barber shop, so... That happened later on and down yeah. the years, but yeah, I, I had like a like a free pass around the wings, just bopping around wings. He was the barber, isn't it? Yeah, playing FIFA in this cell, going, you know, chilling with my man. Can I have a cup of tea with him while I cut his hair? Of course you can, mate. It was chilled. I had it good. I had it good. Did you move prisons a lot or not? Yeah, there was a bit of running around because you know this is how I break it down to people. They don't like you in the same cell, on the same wing, around the same people for too long because you can become you can become. Uh, Technically, you can become more dangerous. You can 
start forming gangs, you can dig out your cell, you can understand the operations, the regime, how they use their radios, how they use their computer system. You start working shit out. We're intelligent people, right? So that's why they dot people around, so they can get on with, you know, keeping it fresh. You don't want they don't want the old dinosaur on the wing for five, ten years. No, and you know, you know more than them. Me. Exactly. So then you're having fights, you're getting split up. Um uh, age, you know, 21 and 10 months, you're moved. 18, you're moved. Um, adult sentence, depend on category, you're moved. A to D, you're moved. So, you know, you're moved all the time. But wasn't it hard for you then to, or did you always just find this? Like, did you just... Yeah, um, the mail system, you know, people writing letters. Uh, you know, Louis coming to this jail. He's a barber. Oh, really? He's strong as fuck. His, his bench press is this. His, get him on the football team. Get him. Oh, for real? That's yeah, what yeah, you just write to each other. And obviously, we've all got little... Um, little phones in that point and we're all connected so um yeah portland was a prison that i settled in eventually um how long was you there in total for about half a decade it was it was pretty yeah substantial it was really good um i recently gone back there i do talks in prisons now and run powerlifting comps in prison so i'm on my third prison now this year but are you finding it going back portland was weird um Aylesbury and guys marsh was a breeze um, Portland was weird. It's like a second. You were there for so long. You know when you grow up in a house when you're a kid and you go back and you remember everything, the smell, the decorations, yeah. the kitchens the same. Like Portland was, it's in my brain. I, I can shut my eyes now and I could take you to any place in that prison. Um, I was football and rugby captain for over four years. I was gym orderly there for four years. Um, <clears throat> I was in the same cell for such a long time. Um, the staff are all you know now friends of mine so it was good did it when you went back fair enough took you back home but did it make you feel any type of way nah no like you know like the whole PTSD, PTSD. nothing nah, at all none of that shit man I'm going back to my nice I bed. think what, what makes a difference is what makes a difference with you is you're not that guy I'm not that guy you did fair enough you liked a bit of a scrap when you was younger that's it that's it it weren't I'm a gangster, I want to be a gangster, I want to go and bully people. It was genuinely wrong place, wrong time. Well, yeah, I mean, <coughs> like we I understand. said, we the, life, the, life, the life was going that way. Um, me going to prison was a was a network thing for me. You know, I, I networked with everyone. I'm, I, I still speak to people daily that have been to prison. I've got people that are in prison that I send money to. I've got people that write me letters, send me Christmas cards. They're more loyal than friends out you here said this to me, yeah. like, you know when people are like oh yeah oh i know him they don't know him he's just on instagram or if, i know people that really know me and i really know them and if they if they shout me and they need money for their pin or they need christmas canteen then that's what i'm going to do because i know how it feels and me going back to prison is not me trying to go oh look what i've achieved it's saying we're made of the same flesh and blood yeah I, all i did was change my mindset and change my surroundings there's no i'm not saying everyone has to go and be world's strongest man but you can definitely use your discipline and routine. Yeah. Keep probation happy. I can help you with jobs. I've got a thousand connections in my phone book, just like you know you have. I know loads of people from different walks of life. Yeah, I'm a barber, firstly. Yeah, barbers know every, everyone, everything. Whatever yeah? you need. Like, I, can make a, I can make a call, yeah? If you've got a flat tire, if you need a light fitted, if you need a swimming pool, if you need a uh, solicitor, like I can phone anyone. Yeah. And that's all from barbering and networking. And all that started, that same feeling started from when I was barbering in prison. Barbering's massive because my dad's got barbershops. Did we speak about this last time? Yeah, yeah. Dad's got barbershops. And I remember I was from like 14, 15, I was there on reception, yeah, taking the money. Sweeping up, doing this. And I this. swear to you, it comes to the point, my dad was coming to me like, yo, son, have you got a number for this guy? Because where I'm there every day, he weren't. Yeah, yeah. Every customer who was walking, up, yep, you, yeah. you're with that guy, yep. You, Isn't it yep. mad how your brain works? You remember everyone. Every single The way they barber. walk, the way they sit, the way they, yeah. I know their haircut. Better than, than, any, yeah, then they yeah. know that I would go over to their new barber and say, Yeah, yeah, he has low, it like this low skin fade, a little bit off the top. <laughs> da, 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 da. And he's looking at me, How do you know that? I'm like, Don't worry, I know. But it's barbering, and even like in the female world, like an eyelash or yeah, yeah. aesthetics, they talk to everyone, everyone. everyone, everyone, and that is one of the best things. Having connections is. You, your, your phone book is Mate, your network. you don't need you don't need qualifications I was saying oh. I've just took a barber on who's uh, come from prison I'm oh, giving yeah? him a chance um, he's proven himself what did he go in for I haven't even asked him, mate. Uh, he's through the Southampton Football Club Foundation. I don't oh, even really? need to ask him yet. Wow. So I trust them. I've cut their hair for a long time. He, they've asked me if I can give this guy a chance. So that's where it is at the moment. He's very new. Um, when he's ready to tell me, he can tell me whatever he wants. And um, That's good you do that, though. Yeah, like I did it with the colleges. So I used to take college students on doing their MVQs. But listen, I said to him, 
listen, it don't matter what you think barbering is, it's not what you've learned. Yeah, it's what you're gonna learn. Yeah. And he cut someone's hair, he cut three people's hair the other day, and I said, put your phone on a timer to 30 seconds, yeah? I'm gonna show you that you're 30 seconds away from being a good barber. You think that's done? He was like, yeah, yeah, it's done. Uh, clipper over combed, bladed the man's beard up, shaped him up, I took some weight out. I said, stop the clock, it's like 24 seconds. He was like, mate, I feel like I've never barbered in my life. I said, listen, you think you're a barber because you're going through the grades and you know how yeah. to use the leave, you're not a barber. You're cutting hair, there's a difference. There so he, I opened his eyes and he messaged me a couple of times, but um, that's what I'm about. I want to, I want to, you know, I've got Morgan, who's an apprentice of mine now. She's doing really well. She's got a little boy. She's got, you know, good opportunity now. Um, I just want to teach people so I can move on and leave. If they can cut hair like me, I'll be happy. I'm not the best barber <laughs> in the world. Yeah, I'm definitely the strongest. But I want them to cut hair. Do you hold that title, world's strongest barber? Yeah, of course I do. Listen, is that uh, a real title you hold? Listen, like a it's not, we didn't do no competition where all the barbers meet up and do deadlifts. But um, <laughs> anyone, anyone now who's got an MVQ in barbering, yeah, who can beat me at a strongman competition, let me know. I'll host it. You can host it. I'll we'll host it. it. The if blue tick show. Any barbers out there <laughs> who are stronger than Lewis? Come down, I'll host it on the Blue Tick Show. We'll do some sort of like fade into deadlift or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whoever can do the quickest skin fade. Quickest skin fade. And heaviest deadlift. And there no. you go. That's we'll your total. That's show. your powerlifting total. No. Come on. That could but work. Question for you. You've changed your life around. You have. Let's fuck the peers and shit off now. It's back into the good part of your life. But I want to ask, do you ever is there situations, scenarios where it does make you tick? Yeah. It does make you go back to how you was mentality wise yeah like uh i don't want to incriminate myself um <laughs> theoretically speaking hypothetically Theor speaking, hypothetically yeah if, if someone thinks they're a bad man and they want to disrespect me in front of my missus or they want to disrespect my family um they're going to see a different side to me and do you have people who know you from back in the day test you no you don't have that no anymore. no no they don't even want to go there it's not even a conversation it's new people young kids yeah local areas crime listen like I, I had a recent i won't say too much because it was a, it was a thing that i got arrested for recently um, uh, about a year ago oh wow well, really yeah so a bus case <laughs> bus case fair but enough. listen it, it was a conversation over a parking space my my parking space and it went away that it shouldn't have gone they were on the phone listen you wait there blah 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 i said mate when you see me you're gonna wish you never said that yeah and they're like, oh, yeah, rah, rah, rah. there's three of them. Turn up. I said, there's only one driver's seat. Yeah, so it was over a parking space. And they phone, I phoned the number on the side of the van because they were parked in my driving space. And I said, listen, mate, I've had a parking ticket now because you're blocking my driveway. And he's like, oh, we knocked the door. Listen, we're just unloading the van. And I said, you're not unloading the van because I've been stood here 40 minutes talking to my neighbor, yeah? You're yeah. fucking lying to me, yeah? Not only are you a fucking... Yeah, yeah. yeah? You're also a lying... C U N T, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was like, You're gonna get yourself hurt, mate. I said, Make sure when you see me, you keep the same energy because you, you don't want to go down this route. And he was like, Yeah, is that so? I said, mate, I'm the big hard cunt that stood by your truck. <laughs> what happened? But I won't say too much. He turned up, there was three of them, and there's only one driver's seat. Someone did something they shouldn't have that reminded me of that night, and I'll leave it there. Fair enough. But Let's got, just say uh, no scratches on me. I'm all good. But well, listen, that that says enough. Then yeah, I can't really. speak about it because fair enough. NFA. Listen, no problem at all. But when you went home that night, <clears throat> yeah, or when you got out of the cell in the morning, <laughs> whatever. No, one no, it, was, it wasn't even no? that thing. It, listen, they 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 were phoning me for about a week after. Yeah, they're a big they're a big group of people. Okay, that move around a lot. I'm not going to say yeah, the yeah, word. Yeah. yeah? I know real people that are in that from that well, lifestyle, yeah. These aren't real because of what they've done because they went to the police, yeah? yeah. Yeah, They were phoning me and I said, "Listen, if you're going to keep phoning my phone, arrange something, yeah? Whoever you need, your best guy. I'm not even from that world, but I will meet you wherever you want." And we'll sort this out because mm -hmm. you're, you're going to keep phoning me, threatening me. We've got pictures of this, of his face and this and that. And I said, listen, you do what you got to do. Yeah. One of them said, with your background, you don't want this getting out. And I said, what are you trying to say to me? Mm -hmm. And I actually said, I'll say the word, you fat cunt. What are you going to do? Because I know who it was who mm -hmm. phoned me. Yeah? yeah. He yeah. knows me from when I was a boy. 
I said, if you're a snitch, you let me know that you're a snitch and I'll have it dealt with the way yeah. that I need to deal with it, yeah? Anyway, so that all went that way. And I said, listen, leave your van, your brand new transit custom, leave it and I'll get the keys and I'll have that van, we'll call it quits. If your boy who was on the phone is not willing to fight me, yeah? then you leave your van. Why would I leave you my van? Because you know where I live and I don't trust you. Yeah. So I need some collateral damage here because you're now affecting my life. I've got a missus, I've got, I've got belongings, I've got cars. I said, so now you know where I live, it's now a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you didn't understand what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. I said, you know what? If I see you, it's we'll fine. have a conversation. And you're not gonna like the conversation. Let's leave it there. And then I got arrested. And obviously, when you went home after in the morning, how did you feel? I felt like I dealt with it accordingly because I felt like my position was jeopardized. My family were jeopardized, my missus. Yeah, true. This is my house. Yeah. I'm at my house. This is where the alleged incident happened, yeah? So if you're, gonna, if you're willing to bring that to my doorstep, I need to show you that that's not, that's not gonna run. And that's exactly, I said to my missus, we spoke about it openly, I said, do you think I dealt with it right? She said, up until this point. <laughs> up until this yeah, point, you was great. <laughs> you were absolutely fantastic and you held your own. The guy shouldn't have done what he he done and it never would have got physical. That's it. Listen, at the end of the day, you know what it is. You can, you can what is it? You can poke a dog <clears throat> in a cage. It is what it was that say? And they say that you can, a, a, a dog's only so long going to bark before it bites or yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Something like that. Like, if they're testing you, you're a human, whether you've got your past of a background, whether you was a naughty boy back in the day or not. But you, the, there's a problem, Mike, yeah? On the phone... Because everyone's I, a gangster. Not only that, I knew the family. Oh, you yeah? knew them? From when I was young. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, but this is the new generation, yeah? yeah. Answering, it was a redirected line. Rah, 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 rah. I said, listen, I said my name, tell so-and-so, it's me on the phone, tell him to call me back. Mm -hmm. And he went, I don't give a fuck who you are. There we go. Yeah, every, listen, do you know what it is? I, I've experienced things in my life. Everyone's a gangster. Everyone. On the everyone. phone, hard as fuck. Even on, I get it on social media. Yeah. Everyone's oh, a gangster. Comments. And then they see me in real life, oh, yeah, oh, bro, so I yeah, love it was. I had, I experienced something the other day. Geezer comes up to me, very nice me, oh, smashing the show, blah, 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 blah. Like, you don't mean you know a face, but you're not sure if sure it's where it's come like, from. I swear that boy was cussing me a couple of weeks back. So I got my phone out, had a little went look. on the messages, ripping the shit out of me on Insta DMs in my requests. And I thought, what What a bitch. Like, yeah. if you're a man and you're born with a dick, be a man. Be a man. Just say, listen, listen I don't like you. Some, don't not like... even that. Some people ain't gangsters. No. You're not a gangster. You don't, don't pretend, pretend to, be. to be. Some people are gangsters yeah. and you don't fuck with them. That's just life. Listen, I'm not a gangster, but I'm not going to let you treat me like shit. No. That's it. But I think... Moving forward with you, you're you're not that guy in the sense that fair enough, you got a switch. And I think everyone has a switch, but they just need to find it. Yeah. You've learned how to control yours. I'm trying to stay away from switching. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. We live in a world now where everyone's driving different cars, everyone can beat their horn, everyone can leave a comment. You know, like, listen, I would rather go through life, go to training see my missus go to work and never have to speak to another person again. That would make me very happy. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't no, really, real. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't really care about anyone else's life because I don't need to. Yeah, because agree. caring about other people's lives, it's, effect, headache. it's fucking headache. Like you're in people's pockets, you're in people's situation. Oh yeah, then, then, then this drama, then this bird said this to him and they've broke up. I don't give a fuck about anyone else's <laughs> life because it takes energy from you, mate. And energy's precious. Time's precious. I know that. Yeah. I've wasted a lot of it and I'm not willing to waste any more. Whether it's family or friends or old, old associates, I don't care because you don't care. Put your foot forward, look for a job, save some money, stop fucking drinking on the weekends, and you might you might find that it opens up a little bit. Yeah, you know it's know. fucking simple. Listen, you, you've if let's touch on now. I want to touch on your strong, world strongest third Britain's third strongest man, uh, England's strongest, England's man. strongest man, yeah, UK strongest man finalist. Fuck it, you're a strong man. Strong I don't know, man, you're, yeah. you're a strong I'm man. On yeah? TV for <laughs> you're a strong artist on TV, and you're a great barber, doing very well in the barbering industry. I want to talk about positives. Talk to us. What's going on in your life right now? Well, I've got a fantastic relationship. My missus is is a beautiful soul. Uh, 
the reason I am who I am now, extended from you know the rehabilitation, of the course. business, well, she's made me a better person, fundamentally. Yeah. Um, I've got two great little dogs. I've got two cats. I've got a great little life. I'm looking for a, my first purchase of a house with her. So you know, life's going amazingly. You know, and talk. Uh, we can touch on credit files and how to get this and mortgages and credit. It's fucking hard work, especially when you've got no credit history. Yeah. So yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, you got no that's the shit history. no one talks about. Yeah, but right? That's a fresh start, no? It is fresh, but they still don't lend you money, right? You've got to build it up. So you know, that's another conversation for another day. But yeah, life's great, mate. Uh, strong man's going well. Got Britain's strongest man qualifiers all of next year. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to, I want to, I train with a full-time pro. I want to be a full-time strong man, you know, to prove that I can. Yeah. Um, I also want my businesses to be passive and running itself. Um, that's a goal for me. If not, I'm a great barber. I could work six days a week and earn a fantastic living. Like I've got backup plans that I never had before. Yeah. And you yeah. know, and it's a, it's a great backup plan. You know, they say being a barber is one of the best jobs in the world because you can earn money anywhere, anywhere in, the world. in the world, mate. If you, if you want to earn money, if you want to earn, uh, a hundred pound a day you can if you want to earn five six hundred pound a day you can it all depends how much you're willing to work yeah. and how much clients you've got five that. six hundred pound a day fuck me mate. well you do 32 trims at 30 pound that's 900 yeah. pound a day oh fuck me yeah all right so i'm doing i'll do minimum 24 a day a day so it's like 700 quid a day if you want it to be yeah and it can I mean? be more yeah, yeah if, it depends. If I want to work six hours, I work six hours. I'm in a position now where with Sarah, the person I'm at the shop with, she gave me a great, great chance when I came out of prison. I've got Lawless Barber Shop. It's unbelievable. It's booming. Everyone's busy. Like she gave me a chance and she said, listen, go and monetize you as a person, yeah. your story. You're amazing at barbering. Go and do it. So I've done it and I've smashed it. The last three years, I've, it's crazy. I have to work three days a week, otherwise I earn too much money and I'm in a different bracket. <laughs> so <laughs> not, in a, well. not in a stuck up way. Yeah, what I'm saying is, well. listen, if, if you, attack, everyone hates tax, right? The more you earn, the more you're penalized for until you earn a substantial amount of money. Then you're good. Then it's good, you're right? If you go over 80K, you may, you may as well earn fucking 40K. There's yeah. no yeah, point, yeah, yeah. yeah? So, you know, we're in this position now where I work part-time because I can and Strongman is the other four days a week um, and obviously I've now started up a chauffeuring protection company that's you know slowly building momentum that's also going to help me out with tax benefits as well and you know setting offs and offsets and this and that you know I'm learning about that side of the world as well that I never understood why it's drive around world. why drive around for free when you can pay for it yourself like with other people's money yeah no it's so definitely true it's definitely true that was how that idea started but positively I'm heading in a direction where in five years time I'm going to have a fleet of cars. I'm going to have a fleet, a team that are going to escort people safely wherever they need to be. That's the goal. That's the goal. So the five-year goal, five-year plan is to get the business up and running. Absolutely, yeah. And we spoke about you becoming Britain's strongest man. That's the goal. So I want to be. The, I want to be the strongest person within the land. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> um, world's strongest man is different. It's, I have to look at it logistically, right? Yeah. And this is, it, it, it pains me to speak about this. It's all American at the moment. Everything's in America. I ain't getting a visa. Who is the strongest man right now? <laughs> Tom Stoltman. No, uh, Mitch Hooper. Tom Stoltman won it twice, then Mitch Hooper, who's a Canadian. Tom Stoltman's a Scottish lad. So, you know, listen, they're elite, right? Six for eight, 180, 190 kilos. I'm six foot, 130, 140 kilos, right? They are the strongest men on the planet because of their physicalities, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo is the best footballer. Lionel Messi is the best footballer. We all played football growing up, right? There's only one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's true, it's true. you can't fucking make yourself taller and you can't make yourself hold <laughs> 200 kilos wish body weight. I, wish I could. <laughs> Fuck but sake. now, it, on a real, yeah, my goal is not to be world's strongest man. I love strong man. If it, if it goes that way, great. I will do everything I can for it too. But in the meantime, going into prisons, going into schools, spreading positivity, awareness of how how graphically it can go wrong in a split second. That's that's the key. Like you could be at a house party and before you know it you've stabbed two people. By accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Of course. Of do you course. know what I mean? You could be driving and you could kill four people by accident. Yeah, you're a murderer. You're not you're not oh it was an accident. Yeah, yeah. You're a mur- straight killer. Because you've took four people's life, yeah? This is stuff that happens on a fucking minute-to-minute basis in the UK, across the world. But let's talk about England, UK, yeah? People are making mistakes that they don't even know are mistakes yeah, until no, it's, it's too late. 
Yeah, so you talk about criminality, gang members, burglars, robbers, people that carry guns and knives. Yes, that's a choice. Yes, we deserve sentences. It is what it is. You've got people that are innocent businessmen, family men, mortgages, wife, four kids. They're going to prison as well. Yeah, for nothing. For nothing. So... You know, it, we live on a we live on an ice skate, mate. We're we're skidding around on this fucking beautiful do, world. Do you know what annoys me the most? Yeah, the world, let alone the UK government, is fucked. And Absolutely one simple reason, one simple reason I do it, they we are all destined to fail. Yeah. Reason being, and I always take it back to one stupid thing. So stupid. Why is the speed limit seventy if my car can do more? Exactly. They want us. To, to fail. They do. They so, want... So they can penalise us. It's funny that you spoke about this because this is something I talk about in the barbershop, right? Oh, yeah? Every car... Quote me, some technical car genius, but every car after 2006 has had a set speed button on the side. Yeah? Yeah. It's optional. <clears throat> Why is it optional? The, the technology is clearly there. Why can I optionally go 155 miles an hour? Yeah. <clears throat> It's stupid, and it comes down to insurance fluctuations, making you different from me. Your car's this color, your car's that color. You live in this postcode. You live in. If every car was the same, like these new driverless cars, if they just drove each other around, there'd be no insurance. There's no okay. government um, funding profiting off deaths. You know, we got these different fluctuations in vehicles, speeding. Uh, you know, it's all penalised financially, right? You do it on purpose. On purpose. It's just there to make money. That's it. Even down to it's, even down to speeding, speeding, yeah. I got a letter, three points and a fine. Why the fine? Yeah. What? How is my fine going to help you? Yeah, it, but it does because it funds them catching you speeding, right? That's it. So that'll pay for that guy sat in that like, fucking van. They've got van. all these murderers, all these people out there carrying knives, 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 and you got fucking policemen sat with a gun, checking your. Yeah. Mate. mate, they're on buses now in London, yeah. filming people. Yeah. That's it. But um, we could talk about that for ages. But, you know, listen, <laughs> the, the, the structure is, yeah, the reoffending. Let's talk about the reoffending, right? If there was no reoffending and you did something wrong once, there would be no reason for a judge, solicitors, police, everything. Everyone, everything was shut down because yeah, everyone's, everyone's behaving now. Yeah. There's no drugs. The alcohol system is the most disturbing system on the planet. Yeah. It ruins everyone's lives that's involved. Yeah. Yep. Without alcohol, there's no co no reason for cocaine. In real, yeah, I know yeah, there's crack and stuff, but if no one's going out drinking, they ain't going out sniffing, yeah? No, no. So if you take alcohol away from society, you stop domestic violence, you stop people walking home getting raped, you stop people fighting on the streets, you stop a lot of crime just from one encouraged liquid in our life, yeah? I'm talking Budweiser adverts, football stadiums, it is fucking everywhere, yeah? Go on, yeah. Because you can drink responsibly, who does? Oh. Yeah? Not many people have that control. Yeah, what I'm saying is, alcohol ruined my life in many ways because my father was an alcoholic and uh, and abusive and aggressive. I was an alcohol. I was um, aggressive on alcohol. I became him when I was drunk. Yeah, it, it was quite um, it was quite obvious that I was from that DNA. Yeah. yeah. Without alcohol, my life would never have changed. I'd probably be yeah. playing for fucking Man let's say Man United. Yeah. I'll probably be out front scoring 30 goals a season in the Premier League. Um, do you know what I mean? But what I'm saying is... You, it, you, you know that I, me and my dad spoke about this a couple of months back, yeah? And it's exactly what you're saying. Exactly to a T. Even down to drug dealing. Change a sentence to a life sentence. Just do it once. No, Done. Change it change to Change it and you won't do it. No, no, as in change it to life sentence, yeah? Yeah. You get caught with drugs, you're getting lifed. Yeah. Some countries is that. Yeah. Look at Dubai. But who's dealing drugs now? If you turn around and said you get caught with it, you're life. Who's touching it? They, but they need to see some examples. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If you carry, there was a there was a rule going around when I when I was younger, when I went to prison. If you carry a knife, you get five years. Yeah, that's how they were trying to stamp out this whole London thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you carry a gun, you get five years for the gun Plus, and a year for, for a every bullet. fucking bullet. Yeah. I'm seeing people walk. Some people walk away. Some people get five years. What happened to this? Because this, I always used to think, because I saw a case, a geezer got caught with a gun in a full magazine and he got like three and a half years. Man. I was like... So that's that's where the the behind the scenes, you know, people are talking. People Then you know three or four drug dealers are getting raided. My man's got three and a half years. I don't, I don't buy the whole system. I've been through the system, yeah? I got, I got a decade. If I was 80 miles left or 50 miles right, I would have got six years. 
all right? It's just how it goes. You're yeah. in a small community. It's, it's called the ripple effect, yeah? If it affects the ripple, if the ripple is far like a tsunami in that small community, you're fucked. Yeah, if yeah. you're in London, don't even make the news. No. So, you know, how many fights do you reckon there are a night in London? <laughs> Let's say a thousand a night, yeah? Yeah. That's quite, I'd say, we'll try and find out, yeah? yeah. There's millions <laughs> of people drinking, yeah? yeah, yeah. How, many, how many potential offences? A thousand fights a week, yeah. In London, one hundred percent easily. Delivery riders, kids that are doing stupid shit. That doesn't mean shit. deadly fight. That just means having a scrap. scrap. Yeah, yeah. So how many get, fights a week in schools? You can get convicted by CCTV alone now because the videos are so clear. You don't need a witness. You don't need a victim. You don't need nothing. CPS can convict you on camera footage alone. CPS can convict you just off of their own evidence, own their evidence. own beliefs, what they think happened. Yeah, yeah. So. Right. We live in a world We're not where... We're going to get into that because that would just start pissing Listen, me it's a deterrent. Yeah, it should be a deterrent. You can't get away with nothing, yeah? When I'm driving my car, there's no point in speeding anymore because you can't get away with it no. because you end up with a letter, yeah? It just happens. So I just stick whatever... And the general problem is as well, because the speed, price of insurance going through, you can't afford three points. If, if my car is telling me on my dash that it's a 30 zone, I'm doing 30. I'm not trying to do 45 like I used to back in the day. It's pointless. Yeah. I've lost my license twice now. So I've had two bands. So, but anyway, listen, I, it is true. The world's fucked. But listen, you know what it is. I always live by: if we can't change it, shut up and just accept just it. Just get on with your own yeah. shit. Let's Put your on. foot forward. Stop trying to make everyone else. It's it's. We live in a world where everyone is so caught up in this social media world. So it's, hip, you know, it's, it's hypocritical everyone, for me to even say because I'm in the world. Everyone's a, but, everyone's an expert. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. You look at like let's take out what we're talking about. And everyone's an expert. You you know footballers are the best people at football in the world and you get people fucking commenting on their shit saying you're fucking shit yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't matter what you do like you could put up an amazing building that you've just built from scratch with your eyes closed and everyone's like that's oh, shit look at yeah. that brickwork like do you know what I mean so anything you do in life you're going to get scrutiny you're going to get people opinions and I accept it all I don't really care what people say I never read comments yeah? that's why I have someone who runs my socials for me you don't need to read it just get on with it I don't care for it yeah. I do this because I love meeting people I love talking to people I love hearing stories I love just the whole thing about the show the podcast I enjoy it Yeah. but Reading all you don't like, I, mean, I really don't give a don't fuck. Care. I do this for me and the guest and to share their story. And if it can help one person, I'm happy. Inspire if it inspires someone to change when they go out on a weekend and have a few drinks and not fight, then I've done my bit. Hundred percent. Listen, yeah. message for the younger generation: uh, put your head into something that you think you can achieve, and stop thinking that you can achieve it while following others. So you lot heard it from soon to be Britain's world's strongest man. Yeah? <laughs> Britain's strongest man potentially in a few years. But world's strongest barber. Yeah, world's strongest barber. Guys, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to stay up to date with Lewis, go click the links in the description. Give him a follow and stay up to date with his life as well. Thank you so much.